Now we're going to check out Loop Mash Effects. There are two different ways of controlling Loop Mash Effects in Cubase. Depending on your production situation, you might favor one control method over the other. So let's learn both methods so you can decide for yourself what control system you would prefer. First, let's grab a loop from somewhere on your computer and drag it to a new audio track. Now let's add loop mash effects to an insert slot in the audio channel or even across the master bus for a whole mix. The easiest way to experiment with loop mash is to set your markers around a loop and jam with loop mash effects by tapping the control buttons with your mouse cursor. This is useful if you're using a laptop without a MIDI controller and still want to have some fun with loop mash effects. You can even record and playback your changes by enabling read and write automation on the plugin. If you're using a MIDI controller and you want to control loop mash effects with the keys on your keyboard, all you have to do is create a MIDI track and assign its output to loop mash effects. Now you can record your loop mash automation like any other MIDI note and edit and rearrange your choices if necessary. You'll notice that the command buttons for loop mash are color coded by effect type and that they're organized like the keys on your MIDI controller. The color coding for the effects are as follows. The DJ effects like scratching and backspin are in red. The stutter and slur effects are in green. The cycle and loop effects are in blue. And the staccato and mute effects are in yellow. All of these control pads can be triggered with a keyboard controller or the virtual keyboard in the transport. Either right click and choose to show the virtual keyboard or simply use the key command Alt K to toggle its appearance. You can either click directly on the keys with the virtual keyboard or use your QWERTY keyboard to press the keys without using your mouse. The keys on your keyboard that match the control pads in Loop Mash FX start on F2 and move up in semitones with F sharp 2, G2, G sharp 2, A2, and so on. But there's even more control beyond just engaging the effects. You can change the grid size by musical grid values, even while the track is playing. So you can change effects and grid values simultaneously for some really crazy results. Loop Mash Effects, the new way to use Loop Mash on any audio signal in a simple to use, fast to connect, intuitive interface. Only from Steinberg, only in Cubase. If you thought Cubase already had every possible reverb that you could ever want, the folks at Steinberg have gone and created another gem with their latest reverb plugin, Revelation. This reverb is best described as a silky smooth, warm reverb, similar to high-end old-school deluxe hardware units. Select one of the dreamy presets to add a bit of warm vintage sparkle to your mix. Revelation gets its unique sound from high quality algorithms, selectable early reflections, and modulating tail. To start, let's take a look at the pre-delay. You can immediately see the results in the display as you adjust the pre-delay and tail size. This is also quite visually apparent in the changing of early reflection types. Some of the more subtle changes in the display produce the nicest results. Enabling modulation chorus might not be obvious in the display, but it's obvious when you hear the richness that the chord modulation adds to the reverb tail. To be able to control the frequency and size of the reverb, early reflections, and tail is really quite something. Not sure where to start? Grab some inspiration from one of the 70 stellar presets included with Revelation, or just start blindly tweaking the controls until you come up with something that matches the flow of the song you're working on. Either way you choose to start, welcome to your new favorite Silky Smooth Reverb plugin, Revelation.
Magneto 2 is the latest, greatest reincarnation of the now famous Magneto Tape Saturation plugin. A tape saturation plugin takes the incoming signal and runs it through a virtual tape machine to simulate the harmonics and warmth that are created when you record audio to an actual tape machine. You can run Magneto 2 on the master bus of your mix, or pick and choose different elements of your mix that will be saturated by loading it into an insert track or calling it up as a channel strip module in the mix console. Increase the saturation percentage to hit the tape harder and get more tape compression and introduce odd harmonic content. You will notice that the harder you hammer the tape, the high frequencies can smooth out to the point of losing presence. This can be compensated by increasing the high frequency adjustment knob to bring back some of that brightness. For stronger tape saturation with a more subtle yet powerful effect, you can reduce the saturation percentage and put Magneto 2 into dual mode for the effect of having two tape machines strapped together. Or if subtle is not your style, go full tilt in dual mode by cranking the saturation percentage and reducing the output gain so you don't overload the channel. You can see if you're overloading the input or the output by toggling the VU display between input and output. Too little of an input can result in unwanted signal to noise ratios. Too high of an input and you drive the tape into negative saturation due to tape coercivity. The trick when applying tape saturation to a track is to adjust Magneto 2 on the solo track until you can hear what you want. Then back off a little and slowly increase the saturation with the track in the mix to see if you've gone too far. Now as if this weren't cool enough, Magneto also lets you adjust which frequencies are being affected by the tape saturation with the low and high frequency range controls. You can even use the tape solo function to help you hone in on exactly what you are affecting and how. Remember, too much of a good thing can be bad in the case of tape saturation, either by grinding all of your tracks into submission with high saturation levels, or by using it on every single track in your mix. This will overload your mix with odd harmonics and result in a cloudy feel. You can help balance this by only using tape saturation on tracks that it benefits, and by combining it with the use of tube plugins for introducing a different kind of warmth with even harmonic distortion. Ideally, you will find your favorite settings for managing saturation levels with different types of music to suit your needs. I personally love using it on drums and bass for rock tunes, but on guitars and vocals for more poppy music. Experiment with a mix project that you know well. You will immediately see results of a little special treatment from Magneto 2. The last audio plugin we're going to look at is the noise gate in the channel strip. As is, the channel strip noise gate is a great, easy to use tool for eliminating unwanted noise or bleed from other sounds. Like for instance, eliminating quiet background breathing between lines in a vocal track, or getting a tom mic so that you don't have unwanted crosstalk when you're not hitting the tom. Well now there's another component to the noise gate. The introduction of the range parameter defines the amount of attenuation when the gate is closed. This can be used for subtle, natural noise gating, or hard muted gates for a dead quiet gate effect. If you're new to this concept, adjust the range until you eliminate unwanted noise, but back off if you're killing transients at the functional beginning or end of a sound. It's a small feature with powerful results. The new range parameter also appears in both the gate and VST Dynamics insert plugins. Speaking of improvements, there are a few special details that have been improved in the latest Cubase release. Nothing complicated enough for each detail improvement to merit their own tutorial chapter, but cool enough changes that they merit mentioning nonetheless. First is the color selector and tool. Before in Cubase, when you would want to color a part, you would have to select the color from the color selector and then choose the color tool and then click on the part to color it. Well, now you don't even need the color selector on the project page. If you click on the color tool on the toolbar and hold your mouse down, the color menu pops up automatically for color selection and manipulation. You'll also notice that the color tool will automatically default to the last color you chose, regardless of whether or not the choice was made in the color editor. 
This is evident when you control click on a part with a color tool and select a color for this track. The same color is now loaded into the color tool and the color selector. That is, if you've still decided to leave it displayed. While there are some other cool detail improvements like the new minimum length setting for hit points which we looked at a few minutes ago, there are also improvements that are a little more subtle, such as the improved inspector tab behavior. Now when you open tabs in the inspector, the tabs will automatically scroll upward if needed to make room for the open tab so that it's entirely accessible. Another one of the detail improvements in Cubase is an audible one. Very Audio now uses an improved method for reducing the risk of audible artifacts by ensuring a seamless transition between the note segments. Last but not least, there are two new features to help improve the appearance of Cubase. There is now a new default track name width that you can set in preferences under Event Display and Track Heading. You can also edit this setting by right-clicking on a track and choosing Track Control Settings. From here, the track name width can be at the bottom of the Track Control Settings under Default Name Width. We can also see the improvements to the redesigned setup windows. We can easily navigate between the setups for each type of track and easily add and remove visible items from our track depending on its type. And if we right-click up here, we can see a similar setup window for adding and removing controls from our main project page. It may be a little thing, but the familiar layout between the various setup windows makes Cubase just that little bit easier to use. Remember that help is only a click away in the help menu, where you can find detailed documentation on everything in the latest version of the most inspirational and the most intuitive digital audio workstation in the world.